Hi, this is Jim Sens over at the Caddis Fly today. We're going to be tying up a hobo spay, and I hope you guys enjoy. What we have here is an Aquafly return eye. This is a 27 millimeter. Hopefully that's in focus. You want to pay attention to right in there. You want about four millimeters of material or shank in the vise because that's what you're going to put this on once your fly is done. You're going to slide this onto the end of that. And I'll go over all that too. So first thing we're going to do is just tie this on. Get a base of thread down. Right like that. All right, so this, you wanna make sure to get right in at the end of your thread wraps. So when you go to put it on, it butts up nice and firmly to all the material that you have there. You slowly work your thread up, get this all tied in nicely. It always pays to take pride in what you're doing because this is your fly, you wanna catch your fish on it. You want everything to be nice and solid and you wanna feel confident in it. Bend it over, just helps create that nice transition between the return eye and where your braided line is. So there isn't a bump there anymore. Right about there, take my scissors, trim that. Get this all tied down, nice like that. And then what I like to do is take my hook, take a powerful magnet, make that nice and solid so I don't have to worry about hooking myself because that hurts a lot. First thing we're gonna use is create a little dub, bubbing, dubbing bump with this shrimp pink. This is a rad color and it's gonna go with the rest of this theme. It's gonna be olive and orange. So we'll start with a little orange on the back end. Not too big of a bump, but a little bit of a bump. And we're gonna take one of the biggest guinea feathers that you can find in your pack. Color, whatever color you want to use. Like I said, today it's going to be orange and olive, so we're going to be using this. I like to get everything peeled back out of the way. I like to tie that all the way in on the shank. About right there. I lifted the fibers up so I can trim them off nice and easy. And just work your way back. Now we're gonna put on our green catasitis stub. We're gonna create a nice little body for that hackle to sit in. A little bit more dubbing. I really have a soft spot for the hobo space. They just cast so nice. And with the no additional weight on this, you can use whatever sink tip that you need to to help get it down. In general, I don't fish this fly all the way at the bottom. I like to have this in somewhere in the upper to mid range of the water column. That's where I feel like I've had the best success with the hobos. Right now is a good time to just kind of close down that return eye. Now we're gonna take our guinea, preen the one side over by using the edge of our scissors. As soon as I grab the stem. And this feather will not be long enough to go all the way forward unless you do very open spirals. About like that. And then with this front part, I like to take it and get it right up front and get one good solid full wrap on the front. Just kind of helps prop everything up a little bit. This fly does get fairly flat, or not flat, but fairly low profile once it's wet. 
But with all the marabou and everything, it stays very lifelike. Turn that off. <coughs> and now, I have a little blood quill. This is the Trout Hunter. I like the blood quill for the back marabou on hobo spades because it is a little bit shorter and generally a little bit easier of a feather. It just creates a little bit more subtle hint behind the next color that we're going to tie in. Three or four wraps. Yeah, I'm gonna peel off a little bit right here. Not like that. Get that seized down. I like to try to pull the stem so it's on the underside. And keep all the stems on the under if I can. Wrap back a little bit, just keep everything nice and tucked in there. <coughs> At this point, I like to take a little Lady Amherst and grab eh, about a quarter inch or so of the fibers. I just trim off the little curly cues on the ends because they tend to get in the way. And I grab them in little clumps of twos. And we're going to tie them in on the four corners of the fly. So we got one right there. Turn it a little bit. Get the next one in there. I'm just using two wraps on each one just to hold them there. And then as I'm working my way around, the ones that I've tied in previously get two more wraps on them. So they all get in there pretty securely towards the end of this. So we've got those on all four corners. I like them to come back to about where the hook will be. The hook's hiding underneath here, but right about where the hook will be is perfect for the length on those. We'll take our olive marabou. I'll pull this one back just to make sure it's really in there. Trim off the tip. Crimp the one side back so it's a little easier. Marabou is really bushy so it can be taxing to get it on there without the fibers getting all caught up in your fingers and in the way, but just be patient with it and it'll work out. Alright, so I've got a little bit more than I wanted. Back it off a little bit. Just pull, pull. Perfect. That right back just a little bit stem off. Now we're ready for our flash. Got a little bit of red flash. Just simple crystal flash. I like to just cut the little corner off and I pull. I like three. It's one of my favorite numbers for tying in flash. And I lost one in that process. Ah, there it is. Try to line up the tips a little bit. You don't necessarily want them to be perfect, but we'll fix that later. It won't be perfect when we're done either. And I like to tie this kind of on the top. It's going to ride on either side of the ostrich that I'm going to tie in here in a second. So I like to take my scissors and just kind of gently grab a couple, 
trim a couple off and then move up a little bit and trim off the other ones. Now it's time for the ostrich. This is a OPST. I like this stuff with the patterns, the dotting on it and the bars on it are really nice. Let's get them all so they're nice and free flowing. And let's just tie in right between those. away from me so we're gonna get those back in there. Yeah. Alright, clean this up just a little bit. I like to start at the bottom and work my way back up to the top. It just tends to keep the thread grabbing everything. Now the only thing we have left to do is add a little bit of something something on the front to kind of make the head look all nice. We could either do the red and black barred, but I think with this one, we're gonna just do some black schlopping. I always like to take a, a moment and find that one feather that I really enjoy, like this one right here. Peel back as much as you're not going to use. And about an inch. This is a very loose guideline, but about an inch equals three wraps. So about an inch, right about there. I take that, trim it off so I have a little tiny tie-in spot. Put that right on the side, closer to the bottom edge if I can. Again, run your scissors down the one side so that they lay back nicely. Just do some nice clean wraps to clean up the head on the front. thread back. Trim your stem and then make sure everything's nice and clean. whip finish. I'm going to coat this in a little bit of UV so I'm not super worried about this coming undone because the UV will hold it in there really well. And this is going to be the Deer Creek UV. This stuff is awesome. I just put a little bit on my bodkin. Just slowly work it around the fly. there I'm gonna wipe off with my finger and you take your UV light just blast it it doesn't take long and you're ready to take it off your vise okay so we've got the end of our shank and we have this tubing we have to get these two to marry each other so we take it slide the tubing up slide it onto the end right there golden. You can either have the right the hook writing point up, point down, whatever you want to do. It's super easy to flip it whichever way you want it to go. 
I personally like mine riding hookups, just because it keeps it off the rocks a little bit better. And that's the Hobus Bay.